If you're new to this channel, you probably could skip over this part, but if you've been subscribed for quite some time now, you've known that I've not uploaded a video on YouTube for over two years now. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm sorry. I've had school, work, got some changes in my schedule. I got major surgeries for my feet, but we're on the road to recovery now, and I hope you guys can understand that we're back. So without further ado, let's get into the video because no one likes waiting. This video is gonna be different from what I've uploaded in the past. And I think I wanna go down this road of, you know, these types of videos and videos that I like to make um, that follow me and my career path and my job. So um, today I'm gonna to show you the DJI Pocket 3. This isn't a new cam, well, it's fairly new, but it's not like new to the industry. A lot of people know this camera. And what they don't really know is that you can get some sick car shots with this thing. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. So jumping right in, this is what the contraption looks like. I um, will put all the links in the description where you can buy it, no affiliate links or anything, just directly to Amazon where I bought it from. So. Let's start off with this is a metal adapter for the DJI Pocket. It is in the description, like I said, um, it's metal, so it will have less chance of falling off. Now, I haven't had this thing fall off yet, and I've been doing it in some testing for quite some time now. Um, I'll show you some video footage of what this contraption actually does and how it looks on the road. So, first of all, we got this. This is a quick release mount, also a USB-C, so it just snaps in, doesn't fall out, um, at least cross my fingers. But um, yeah, there's that. Second, I upgraded this spring for the shock absorber. Now, most people use this shock absorber for handheld. There's some mixed reviews. Some people say it works. Some people say it's not even needed if you're just carrying it. And I agree, it's not needed. But on the road, if you're making a contraption like this, I think it adds a lot more to your footage. So first of all, the spring was not that good. I went to Ace Hardware, cut up a spring and wired it through here. If you really want a detailed review, comment below and I'll let you know uh, the steps to take and maybe even make a video about it, okay? So that spring is upgraded. Now it can be changed with this little thing in the back. You move it down and it's less tension. You move it up and it's more tension. And then it depends how like tight you want your footage to be. If you want it to bounce, like sometimes it does go like this and it hits the top and it like does that. That will shake your camera. But if the camera's already on it, it'll kind of stay balanced. Unless you hit a really big bump, then it might go down here and back up, but very rare. Um, unless you live in a city with a lot of potholes, which is just kind of everywhere nowadays here in California. And next, you can live with one, but I got two for extra safety. These are small rig adapters. They're like little clamps and you can, they're flexible. So you just unscrew this and you can move it all around in different shapes. Um, you screw one onto the back here and you screw one underneath together you get extra stability and in case one falls off you have another so um it's really about safety here um if one falls off i don't want to lose this 600 hundred dollar camera put a dent in my pocket don't want that to happen um hasn't even gotten close yet but in case it does and this is more stable i mean look at this thing it's like not moving and you're probably wondering how does this clamp onto your car without getting scratched well here in the picture, I have a tow hook. The tow hook screws on uh, to the back of your car, if you didn't know that, or the front, but I like the back because it's less wind, it's near the exhaust, you can hear it, and you can follow the cars that you wanna see, or if you have a group of friends some buddies, you can track a subject and follow the car, which is shown in this video. Take a look.
Now, as you might have noticed, it's a little hesitant at times. If there's a lot of cars on the road, it's not going to pick up that car. If it changes lanes, goes behind another car, etc. But if you have like a two lane road or whatever, and a car is right next to you or behind you and then it moves, it, it's going to work. It's going to work pretty well, actually. Um, and as you can see, it's kind of dull in this image in the video, but that's because it's an HLG. Um, so you can convert it to HDR and all that different color profiles to get the best color for your video. And this is a 10 bit 4k 60. Um, and it's, it's an absolute beast of a camera and it packs a punch for what you, what you're spending for. So highly recommend that. So the tow hook clamps on or screws on to the back of the bumper, the front of the bumper, whatever you want to mount. I suggest the back because then once again, you can get the cool shots. Then these go on to the tow hook, one on the bottom, one on the top. And there you go. That's your build right there. I mean, that's pretty much it. Now for safety, once again, I'm going to reiterate, this could get stolen if it's like people are like, oh, this looks easy to take off. I mean, that's that's everything, though, in life, unfortunately. Um, so getting it off might be a pain, but just know that this thing is going to be very, very hard to get off once on the road. It's not going to fall off uh, as easy as you think, if at all. Like this thing I've tested on the freeway going the speed limit, around the speed limit, um, and... It, it works like a charm. I tested it on the freeway, went over some bumps. Now this isn't waterproof. This is not waterproof. So if you're stuck in rain, you know it's gonna rain. If there's puddles on the road, if there's a leak, what whatever, I don't know. Do not bring the camera. So I don't know about this, but I would take this off as well. Um, I've noticed that you don't need to unscrew anything else but the clamps to get it off and it can stay in the position that it's in so you don't have to adjust it every single time so that's nice and that's going to do it for this video i like to keep my videos somewhat short for tutorials so you know no one gets bored and i wouldn't want to get bored watching a video that i don't know too much about either so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you want to see more videos like this in the future comment below i always like feedback so Give me some feedback um, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.